For this particular run, though, I get to use these things as much as I want. Reason being, that's the unlock requirement for the UFO ending. To get the UFO ending, basically, it's just a killing spree with the beam weapons, either the heather beam or the sexy beam. All you have to do is make sure that you kill off at least 30 enemies just with the beam weapons by the time you get to Heather's apartment. Yeah, you better run. Oop, out of stamina. That's not good. So it's not a perfect weapon. You do still have to worry about running out of stamina. And it is lacking a bit in knockback. But it definitely is fun. Okay. Stamina recharged. You ready for a rematch? Perhaps not as quick and not as completely, utterly broken as the unlimited submachine gun, but still satisfying. I'm going to have fun with this. So hey, who's ready for things to get really weird? I've turned off the background music and the radio because I want to have as good a chance as possible to actually get this to be audible on this video. If you're playing on hard mode on an extra new game and wearing the transform costume, things get really weird when you go into this particular room in the other world uh, hilltop center. The one where you get the pork liver and have one insane cancer to deal with. Yes, the insane cancer is speaking in Japanese. I have no idea what he's actually saying. Heather will also speak. If she's too close to taking too much damage. I think she also has a Japanese death quote if she's wearing the transform costume. She also has a strange battle cry if you equip her with the maul during this. Just gonna let him finish me off to hear that. So yeah, that was good and bizarre, and uh, oh, hi there, Valtiel. Don't suppose you have anything to add to the conversation? No, apparently not. So, yeah. One of the wonderful things I discovered watching Silent Hill 3 videos on YouTube, I didn't know anything about that, so, uh, yeah. So with all that out of the way, if by the time you make it to Heather's apartment you've killed at least 30 monsters using the Heather Beam or Sexy Beam, it's time for things to really get crazy. I'm home, Dad. Listen, something crazy is going on. Shit! Yeah. this. And that's about it. 
poor little soul. I can't believe that. I'm going to Silent Hill, and I'm going to bust some heads. Oh, Dad, you're the coolest! Well, I guess that solves the problem. Now it's time for a drunken Japanese karaoke sing-along. Enjoy!
So yeah, that happened. Obviously, my rank took quite a hit here. Yeah. Reason being the revenge ending, as they call it, pretty much cuts out half the game, so a lot of the things that you actually get rank points for, you're not even going to experience. So, yeah, as I said, let's talk about what you actually have to do to obtain a 10-star rank. First, the ending type. The ending type obviously needs to be normal or possessed ending. Action level has to be hard or higher, one of the extreme modes. Personally, I'd recommend going with hard just for the longer stamina bar and everything like that. Riddle mode has to be hard. Your clear time has to be below 2 hours and 40 minutes. Very doable if you know where you're going. Your saves and continue number, you have to have fewer than 2. Personally, I would recommend doing one right before finishing off the missionary, so like, right at the Daisy Villa apartments, and the second one right before fighting the god. Splitworm kill time, you have to do it in less than two minutes. Now, obviously, the other bosses aren't even listed here since I didn't encounter them, but the missionary also has to be taken down in less than two minutes. Leonard has to be taken down in less than three minutes, and <laughs> good luck with that. Memory of Alessa has to be taken down in less than three minutes, and the god has to be defeated in less than eight minutes. The number of game clears you have to have cleared the game at least five times. Number of items found, you have to have found at least 130 items. Number of extra weapons, you have to have found all five of them, meaning the Beam Saber, the Flamethrower, the Unlimited SMG, and the Gold and Silver Pipes. The Heather Beam slash Sexy Beam, those don't count. Defeated enemy by shooting, you have to defeat 75 or more. Same for fighting. So, you do have to defeat at least 150 enemies. Half by shooting, half by fighting. Interesting thing I can point out here is, apparently the Heather Beam and Sexy Beam don't count as either. They don't count as shooting or fighting, so that's kind of interesting. Total damage taken has to be less than 500 which is pretty tricky. Consider that a full life bar is 100 points of damage, so you can only afford to have your life bar drained five times, basically. And you cannot have any rank reductions. Your rank is reduced if you use any extra weapons or end on the, uh, the revenge ending, which, since you have to use a special weapon to do that anyway, that kind of goes without saying, plus how much of the game it eliminates. But that's what you have to do for a full 10-star rank. And so, yeah, with that, that's pretty much everything I have to show for this game. We're done with Silent Hill 3. And thus, another project comes to a close. Silent Hill 3 is my favorite of the series. There's just something about it that kept me coming back when I first played it. Like most games, it's not without its flaws, but it's a very fun game nonetheless. The way it suddenly tied itself to the original game's plot was quite a surprise the first time I played, and you can tell that's what they were going for. A shocking surprise to stir up emotions in the players of the original game. However, Another thing I love about this one is just how much there is in it that they obviously were just having fun with. Beyond the normal silliness of a UFO ending, you have the costumes, especially the transformed costume and Douglas's boxers, the sewer fairy, the Silent Hill 2 callbacks with their complete disregard for the fourth wall. It injects a good sense of humor into the game, and yet one can still enjoy the eerie atmosphere of Silent Hill as well. The new atmospheres, the new locations, they did a very nice job with it, I thought. A lot of people tend to feel that the series kind of went downhill after this one. Myself, I love Origins, and I find Homecoming an alright game. Before is, uh... Yeah, we'll cover that next year. Oh boy. 
but I think a lot of fans of the series can agree that 2 and 3 were probably the high points of the series. I usually see those as the highest regarded among fans. So with that, thinking about the next project, I'm going to be taking a shorter break than usual. With that fiasco at the end of September, I think I'd rather just get to work on the next one sooner rather than later. The plan thus is I'll be taking the weekend off to relax, and then on Monday, I'll start recording Castlevania Aria of Sorrow. Note, I might not have any videos ready for that night, but I will be recording by then. So with that, it's time to bring this one to a close. As always, thank you very much for watching, I hope you all enjoyed Silent Hill 3, and I shall see you again next time for Castlevania Aria of Sorrow. Until then, fare thee well.